support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits. Welcome to this edition of Able to Learn Air, the one and only program that for the past eight seasons has been focusing on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Seiler, and Arlene is not here today, and with me to discuss uh, direct support professionals and all of that uh, is our sponsor, Green Mountain Support Services, Joshua Smith of Green Mountain Support Services. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you again, Lawrence, again. for having me come, come in. And what is um, a direct support professional, and what do they do? Okay, yeah, so a direct support professional is the, is, is the staff, it's the, it's the person that provides that direct, that direct uh, support, well, because it's a direct support professional, provides that, that direct support to the person that we provide services for, whether it be someone with an intellectual disability, a brain injury, or just a physical disability. Mm -hmm. And what they do is, their, their, their job is, uh, is as unique and different as the people we provide services for. So there's not, the only thing they all have in common is that they make sure that the person they're providing services for has access, has access to the same things in their neighborhood and community as anybody else would. For example? Well, for example, if, uh, for example, if, if someone um, is, has a job and needs the help of a direct support professional, if someone is going shopping, anything that anyone would do uh, that you and I would do in the, in the community and someone who would still need help to access that through, the, through a direct support professional, that's what they would do. Now, what are some do's and don'ts of a direct support professional? The, ultimately, what they do is that, it, it's that keeping in mind, too, is that, that a direct support professional's job, as I say, is to, is to be there and to advocate and to, and to make sure that person can access. They are very much like, I'd put it this way, is think about it, um, and this is what Joseph Macbeth, who is the executive director of the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, he makes a good analogy where a direct support professional is like the Sherpa helping somebody climb Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody succeeds in climbing up Mount Everest, the Sherpas, the Sherpas are not in the picture. Mm -hmm. They are behind that. They were there to make sure the person is able to succeed in their goals and their hopes and their dreams. That's what a direct support professional does. A direct support professional is not a babysitter. Mm -hmm. A direct support professional is, is, is someone who's there to advocate, to assist, and to, and to ensure that people are making, uh, making uh, good decisions. Mm -hmm. And so it depends. If so are they there to, not, I wouldn't call it a security guard, but are they there to protect the person from harm? Well, it's, well, I think that everybody around should be protecting people from each other from harm. So it's the same thing. When you walk out into the street, if I walk out into the street and I trip and fall, the community around is going to help me get back up on my feet again. It's not the job. I don't have a direct support professional who's going to help me get up. So, but but it's they're not there to. They're a part of that is theirs to make sure they can advocate for the person and support them. Uh, they're not a bodyguard. They're not. They're that's you know their role is to just is to to work with people because the people we work with are adults and adults by by law are able to make adult decisions. Unless They're, it says in your ISP or your, your, your file that you have ju a judgment issue. We have what's called is that what we call it is that there is uh, important two and important four. It's a, it's a person-centered thinking skill that talks about what's important to somebody and what's important for somebody. And we always talk about what's important for somebody is health and safety. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if, if somebody needs help that might have mobility issues, that they help that person physically to get around and about, making sure that, uh, that they're, they're safe. And what's important to somebody is also what their role is to make sure that they are, they work with, uh, that they're following what, they're, what they want to do in life, having that, that access to what, what it is to be a, a, be a part of a community. Now, what is the 
NADSP organization all about? Well, the NADSP is the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals. And what they do is they are the premier, they are the number one uh, agency in the United States and in Canada and, and, and looking at other nations of like what they do is they are the singular voice of, of advocacy for direct support professionals. Direct support professionals do the role to be advocates and support people with disabilities in the community. Mm -hmm. And the NADSP's role is to advocate for direct support professionals. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they really push, and one of the things they're really pushing right now is, is, is ensuring that direct support professionals have an occupational code, which means a Department of Labor recognized occupational code. Everybody, lawyers, doctors, nurses, uh, all kinds of positions, teachers, have an occupational code, a federal occupational code. Once you have that in place, that gives, that gives people the, the power to, to train and, to, and to, to, to give people that opportunity to say, these are the skills you need to be a, a direct support professional, we, what you need to be a nurse or need to be a doctor, any of this, that there's an established code of what this mm -hmm. job is. As a DSP, the DSPs do not have an occupational code. And so what the NADSP is one of the things they're also promoting is, is lending credence to the, the professionalism of what a DSP is. And that's something that no other agencies are really working on nationally except the, the NADSP. Yes. And the one piece to it as well is that, that they are able to, that, that there's so much power in a name. There's so much power to words. And the very fact, and if, if there's any agencies that, are, that, that, that watch this as well as around here, is that, that uh, there, is, there is power in words. And the very fact that, no, that some agencies are not calling them direct support professionals is actually harming the entire industry, the human service agency system. Because you go on Indeed.com or you go on Craigslist or you go on places in the, in the classifies and looking for jobs, people call them different things, community support workers. They call them uh, the, the, uh, the community support specialist, uh, direct specialist supports, or whatever you want to call them. The point is, is that they have a name. They're called direct support professionals. And, they, and, and every agency has to in order to make sure that they have a voice and making sure that people are actually, uh, that DSPs are, are being treated with their own occupational code and treated equally, they mm. have to first start with making sure people are calling them the same. People don't call nurses different names. They're called nurses. They're called RNs. Well, they were LPNs. There's different types of nursing. But you call. But but the thing. But there's. But if you're a registered nurse, you're a registered nurse. Other hosp hospitals don't call them something else. LPNs. They're called LPNs no matter where you go. The point is, is that direct support professionals, DSPs, need to be called DSPs in every single agency and every single place where there's a direct support professional working. That agencies should not and do not and should not be calling them something else because it hurts the entire system when we try to advocate for higher wages and for higher pay and for more training. It hurts the entire industry if, if other agencies are not calling them direct support professionals. Um, speaking about harming the industry, um, I understand that there's a movie, uh, a documentary that um, the University of uh, Minnesota, Minnesota. Minnesota yeah. did. Yeah. Um, it's called Invaluable. Let's take a look at the Invaluable trailer um, presented by the University of Minnesota. Let's take a look at this.
ahead. Thank you. Walter, he's very outgoing and he loves to get out into the community and socialize and we go shopping. This is a classic. And he loves rock and roll. Walter has many gifts and Walter has cerebral palsy. He needs support in getting around and meeting people in his community. And he also needs assistance at home with things like fixing meals and getting dressed, budgeting, and shopping. Through state and federal programs, Walter and others with intellectual and developmental disabilities have professional staff to provide critically needed support. I tell you what, seeing his confidence and his self-esteem really soar has been just fabulous. Can you explain a little bit about yeah. Invaluable? Yes, so I would be happy to say that, that we, we, that Greenmount Support Services in partnership with some of the other agencies within the state is having Jerry Smith, who's the director and producer of Invaluable, he's coming here to Vermont on November 20th, 21st, and 22nd, and he's doing a tour throughout Vermont to show this documentary. So it's, and as I tell people, it's like this documentary is about DSPs, it's not for DSPs. The documentary is for, for self-advocates, people who, uh, for parents and guardians, who it's for agency, human service agency staff, it's for legislators, it's for everybody who is directly affected by the DSP workforce crisis that the DSPs, as the role of a DSP, it is the highest growing job, the employment sector in, in the United States right now. Because we're in an aging population and people who are aging will also need direct support professionals. So it's not just with people with in intellectual disabilities, it's for people with traumatic brain injuries, it's for people with, it's for people who are, who are, who are growing older who, needs, who need physical assistance in accessing the community. And there is a crisis. We now have more job vacancies of direct support professionals than we do have uh, that we have people who want to be direct support professionals. Question. Yeah. The direct support professionals, there's, there's training going on out there. Um, what are some do and don'ts, in your opinion, of what a direct support professional should do? Well, or, so as, or shouldn't was, do? as I was saying earlier, our direct support professional's job is to, is to is to assist the person to access their community. And I want to be clear, too, is that we use the word community as, as kind of a, as a catch-all for going out into the world or going out in the neighborhood. Community isn't a place. Community is a, uh, is, community isn't a physical location. Community is a group of people you connect to. For instance, people have a church community. People have a sports community. People have a library community. People have whatever their community is is based off of what their what their interests are and what they with the people they want to connect with. So it's not so and we as individuals get to choose who our community is. You know, for instance, I have you know I have a community of, of people that you know work in the nonprofit sector. That's my that's a community. I also like to uh, I, I like to draw and, and I'm an, I, I do art projects on the side. So I have an art community. Those, it's not a physical place I go to, it's, it's a group of people that I connect with. And so as a direct support professional, their job is to make sure that the person that they're providing services for is able to access their community. And as I say, that community is not a physical location. It can be any place. So when people say, let's go out into the community, that is, that's a hollow way of saying it. It's, Let's go to that quilting club. Let's go to work, because work also is a community. Well, let's go, you know, bowling or something. And bowling is an activity, and unless you're actually a part of a bowling league, or if you're part of a community, a bowling community, um, it's 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 busy time, and that's not what we're, that's not what direct support professionals do. Their job isn't just to fill the days. Their job is to make sure that the person they're providing services for um, is missed making sure that they have natural and, and sincere friendships. Oh, for example, um, a direct support, if, if a, a client that they're, yeah. or a, a, a individual yeah. that 
I don't like using that word client, but if an individual wants to gather with some friends but yeah. still needs a direct support professor, um, today I want to go to the Chinese buffet. Yeah. Can the direct support professional take them or go with yeah, them they, to yeah, that? Yeah, it's, and as I say, it's, the, it's the, the person's in charge in that sense. And then, and their job also as a direct support professional is to be there almost like, um, that depending on, as I say, so individualized. Some people who might have a disability in their 20s might not have the, the, the social acumen to understand how to talk to people outside in, in the neighborhood, outside in the world. So they might be able to help them try to you know, find connections and, and let well, maybe, them. Maybe, okay, of a person, for example, if, we, if, I, if my wife and I need a direct support professional and say, okay, we want to go on a trip. Yeah. With our family to Israel. Yeah. Can you help us? You don't necessarily have to go yeah. on that trip with us if you needed to. Yeah. But can you help us book a trip in a travel agency? And so, but it would depend on what, but then we're going to know what the need Not is. paying for it, but. Right. You know. No, it would depend on, like, for that example, is that if. That 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 if that if you if you have the ability to to not how n not know how to do that or how to that they would what would be and what would a direct support professional would probably do is help you connect with um, a, a travel agency to say sit down with you maybe going to the travel agency and saying hey you know I'm working with you know Larry you know uh, Lawrence and and Arlene trying to book a flight and so they might be able to help you advocate for that they might help you um, put you in a thing their job isn't to do to live your life for you their job is to make sure that you can access the same things everybody else has an inalienable inalienable right to access in terms of the movie invaluable let's yeah. talk about that a little bit more um, um, the direct support professional uh, job um, hasn't been the easiest of jobs um, you know as far as pay yeah as far as because people are trying to make this a full-time job situation why is the direct support professional looked down upon sometimes because of the job um the job entail what the job entails a couple of things if i'm saying that right i say a couple of things is one i think our culture doesn't recognize the importance of a direct support professional so if you go to other other countries and their cultures somebody who Somebody who who works with someone, someone who does a direct support professional job in other cultures, is considered in high regard. Is like because Israel, you, for example. Well, in any places, you know, and like I, I lived in Africa for close to fifteen years. The work of supporting people is is considered very is is considered a, a, a legitimate professional career. And so the, the fact is like one, as I said, there's no federal occupational code for direct support professionals as one is, is a big mark that's not good. The second thing is- Is that all across the board or? Yeah, it's, it's federally, federally, they do nothing. The second thing is that there is, that there is, and because once you have an occupational code, then you can have training curriculums put in by colleges and universities to say, this is, the, this is what you need to be a direct support professional. And then once that's in place, well, New York recognizes it as an occupational code because this example. I have a friend of mine who yeah. teaches at Bronx Community College. Yeah, teaches people who have to become staff in group homes. Yeah, you know, you you have there's training involved to do the job, but there's not there's not a federal occupational code means that if I that if I go to CCV and take a class and something to be a DSP, that does not going to translate to going to Nebraska. They're not going to recognize that. So, oh. but if you're a nurse, if you, if it's a nurse gets trained in, in in CCV and gets trained in a class, it'll be recognized wherever you go because it is a federally recognized job. So that's the piece. And the other and the other point is that it's 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 consistently underpaid. The position's underpaid, and there's no and people don't create career ladders within the within the direct support professional. Um, realm and that's these are these things of why we need to promote direct support professionals as a career choice and because a lot of people say hey if I'm gonna be a direct support professional the next ladder up would be a case manager or something like that but being a, a direct support professional and being a case manager completely different jobs 
They don't translate. You what? can't translate the work that you do as a direct support professional. Just because you're a good direct support professional does not mean you're going to be a good case manager. Two completely jobs. Mm -hmm. Two completely well, different I mean, you jobs. You can move up in the agency. It's, but you can be exact, but you move up in the agency, but that doesn't mean that you're, it's like going to a restaurant and saying, oh, you're a really good waiter. We're going to make you a cook now. It's two completely different things. It's the same restaurant, but it's two completely different jobs. Sure. To say that if you're a good DSP, you're going to be a good case manager is not the case. Um, to be, if you're saying you're a good case manager, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a good DSP. Two completely separate jobs. Now, before we take another break, yeah. uh, why has DSP um, profession been very low paid? Because obviously, you people don't become a millionaire from it. But right. And it shouldn't be, because you look at that, so for instance, LPNs we talked about earlier. You can go to school for an LPN, you can do this, because ha they have a federal occupational code. They're recognized as a job. So if you do that, someone who, who basically does, an LPN's job basically is a DSP, mm -hmm. to do that, to do that work, and then you get paid more for that. But why isn't the DSP's job? Is because you can get paid minimum wage for it, because there's no there's no career ladder for it, and people think it's just a, a, it's just a, a, an entry-level position. It's not. The work that we do as direct support professionals, and that we like to say is that when you look at it, there are, if you're lucky enough, there are, there are three jobs. There's three jobs that you will see in your life that you'll be directly connected to, that you'll see. Nursing. Nursing. You know, doctors, mm -hmm. teachers, yeah. and direct support professionals. Direct support professionals should and have... And chefs, you know, But you, you, you're not... But I'm talking about because when... Because does, does DSP... Everywhere in the world. Can a DSP cook a meal for somebody? If everywhere a, in the world. Everywhere in the world. I'm talking about from Uganda to Japan to, to, to Bulgaria to the United States. The three jobs that people always get that will that will all, they'll always see in their lives is going to be a teacher, a doctor, and a direct support professional. Mm -hmm. The very fact that direct support professionals are not treated the same level as anything else is 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 insidious to have certain that agencies. The United States. Uh, I'm not mentioning them, but certain agencies have in their um, in their uh, um, you know job descriptions. Yeah. Personal care attendants. So what is the difference between, and we have a couple of minutes left. Yeah. What is the, some? What is the difference between a, a personal care attendant and a DSP? Is there any correlation between? I'm just asking. Yeah. Any correlation between the yeah. two? Yeah. It's what I was saying earlier. People that other agencies cannot be calling them different things. They're direct support professionals. They're all direct support professionals. So when an agency calls them something else besides a direct support professional, it hurts the entire human service mm -hmm. industry. They have to be calling them direct support professionals. Excuse me while we take another break. Green Mountain Support Services uh, did a public service announcement about their agency. Um, let's take a break and look at that public service announcement. Do you know an elderly person who doesn't need round-the-clock nursing care? but would benefit from companionship and assistance to get the most out of community, family, and friends. Green Mountain Support Services Adult Family Care Program is looking to serve elderly individuals who may need assistance, working with homeowners to become shared living providers. To find out if this is right for you, go to gmssi.org or call 802-888-7602. Welcome back. Um, and, and part of that direct support, that, that, so we were talking about, and, and this is the other point too, is that shared living providers in Vermont, um, as you saw in that, in that public service announcement, shared living providers are a type of DSP. Um, in any other state, they would be considered residential staff, residential DSPs. But the work we do as sh the shared living providers mm -hmm. is, is, is completely different than the hourly wage you have direct for direct support professionals. Which is what? What is the I, a shared living work? provider is someone who opens up their home for someone with a disability to live with them, and so, so they get a stipend for the agency they, from and, the agency. Yes, and so the the piece of that is that the work they do um, is is the work of a direct support professional, uh, and and that also is is consistently underfunded in those positions, and. 
and that's something that we we have to. And Vermont's really good at it. I gotta I gotta give Vermont the credit it deserves. Vermont is really good at providing the the support that their direct support professionals need and their shared living providers need compared to other states. Mm -hmm. uh, but comparing it to other professions, it still it still lacks. But compared to other other states, um, mm -hmm. they're pretty they're really well. But you know, getting back to what the the documentary is about, the documentary is really focusing nationally the workforce crisis we're having for direct support professionals, and that and that and it rings very true in Vermont, where in How Vermont, so? well, in Vermont we have we're, there's not a lot of people who want to be shared living providers because they don't know about it. There's not a lot of people who know about direct support professionals. Why? Why is it that? Excuse me, Fenton. Why is it that sometimes people don't want to work? directly with people with special needs is it because of the pay or is it no i don't it's it's not the it's, the amount of work people it's, have it's not the pay so much as that people don't know the position exists because as i say other agencies do not call them direct support professionals so it's so hard for people to say oh that's the same job here at Washington County Mental Health, as it is at Howard Center, as it is in, in uh, United Counseling Service, as it is in Upper, uh, you know, in Upper Valley Services. The agency, so many agencies that are not calling them direct support professionals, it's hard for people to, to recognize that job as, as, a, as a sink. If you look at something that says teacher, everybody knows what a teacher is. Bus driver, I know exactly what a bus driver is. I look at something that says community support specialist. Wait, how is that different than a direct support professional? Or how is that different than a personal care attendant? When agencies call them different things, it confuses the general public. And it's so hard for people to kind of grasp that. Um, what are some of the future goals of uh, coming in the coming year? Uh, what are some of the future goals of Green Mountain Support Services? Well, so, you know, one of them is just really, per, you know, for in 2020, it's just really making sure that we really work with other agencies to make sure that they're calling them direct support professionals. It gives us that singular voice of advocacy and, and, and support to make sure that happens. As far as um, your opinion, what, what are some of the misconceptions? I mean, because some people don't want to work in the field of special needs for various reasons. Yeah. Um, what are some of the misconceptions around DSPs and then, misconceptions around working with people with special needs? Well, I think, well, the, I think the misconceptions is, is that a lot of people think we work with patients. We don't work with patients, we work with people because patients inf infer that somebody's sick. Mm -hmm. people, that dis people with the disabilities are not sick. Mm -hmm. They're just wanting to access the same things everybody else gets to access. Mm -hmm. So the work we do, as I say, is it's, 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 it's based out in the, it's based in, out in, in excuse me, out in the neighborhoods, and it's also based on um, making sure people can access and, be, and, and advocate for the things that we, as general public, just naturally, uh, it's easy for us to access. Mm -hmm. So that's a major point of what direct support professionals and shared living providers do. Um, can you give them the address or website of NADSP and then yes, so, support services? Yes, mm -hmm. so NADSP.org. You find all that stuff, and NADSP.org is also promoting what's called an eBadge Academy, which is what we talked about earlier, which is a, is a credentialing process that can be recognized nationally for people. So what they're doing is NADSP is, is, is helping to do the work that other local schools aren't doing, is, is creating a credentialing program for people that people want to be direct support professionals and creating a tiered system. For and your... Um you're at your phone number for Green Mountain Support Services. It's 802-888-7602, uh, and you can find us at gmssi.org. Sure. And if it's okay, Lawrence, I'd like to plug where our invaluable where, and we can probably put it up on the screen as well, um, show you where the list of where invaluable is going to be playing here in Vermont. Yeah. And uh, on November 20th, it's going to be playing at Main Street Landing, the film house in Burlington. Yes. At 6 p.m. on November 20th. November 21st, it's going to be at the Savoy Theater, just right down the street, uh, 20, uh, on on Main Street at, at Mont, in here in Montpelier at 1 p.m. That night, it's going to be so November 21st in the evening. It's going to be at the Tuttle Hall Theater in Rutland at 6 p.m. And in November 22nd, it's going so to the the 21st, the director will be there. Yep, he'll be there at 1 p.m. at the Savoy Theater. And on November 22nd, uh, he, it'll be at, playing at uh, um, at the CCV campus in Bennington at 3 p.m. 
So there's four places that, that anybody here who is, who is affected by direct support professional workforce crisis, um, who is a direct support professional, and as I'm going to say for the direct support professionals that are watching this, this documentary is about you. It's not for you because you, you, you are already a captive audience because you already know about the crisis of being a direct support professional. So it's for people who are self-advocates. It's for aid, human service agency employees, state employees, for guardians, for self-advocates. It's, mm. it's an incredibly important documentary to watch. And as we say, the director is going to be here. He's flying in from Minnesota to be a part of this. And we got to thank. I have got to thank the Howard Center. We got to thank um, um, Champlain Community Services. Want to thank Washington County Mental Health, and you know I want to want to thank uh, um, United Counseling Services. We want to thank other services um, and uh, and and CSAC out of out of uh, Rutland for putting this on for us as well. Okay. Well. Um Thank you for joining us on this edition of Able to On Air, and we'll, we'll be sure to be there for the invaluable presentation. Uh, we would like to thank Joshua Smith, um, um, Green Mountain Support Services Executive Director and sponsor of um, Able to On Air, as well as Washington County Mental Health and all uh, Israel. Uh, again, uh, thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Done On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. Arlene could not be here today. Um, see you next time on the next edition of Able Done On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Support for Able to Learn Air, Green Mountain Support Services, to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits.